Uh, hello, so I'm going to make a quick video and I, I've just, well I probably should have been doing a bit more revision and stuff like that but I haven't. I've been watching um just like auditions on like X Factor and things like that, like like not, not the really bad ones but like the really good ones and I just think it's interesting how people have like really great talents like that and yeah you don't really see it anywhere else in the animal kingdom of, of I don't know. It's not it's not the same anyway, we don't worship it as much. But that wasn't exactly what I wanted to talk about. Um it I think the topic is language. I guess that's what it would come under anyway, and it's this idea that we can we can say things without actually saying things. Um verbally anyway. So or we can we could say one thing but it implies another based on the context. Um, for example, I was just watching one of the auditions and P.S. was saying, like, he was commenting on his first impressions of this guy. He was he was about to audition. He was wearing a big black leather jacket. jacket. He had, like, um, I think it was braids or dreadlocks in his hair. I can't really remember. Uh, he was chewing gum and, yeah, he just he didn't look like he was going to, like, do, do a great performance. And that's what P.S. said. And he came out and sang this Frank Sinatra song and it was, like, really good. And, um... So Pierce was saying like how he was commenting on on the guy's appearance and how his first impression wasn't really that great. And then he never actually said that the guy was good good at singing. He was just like he just said he didn't expect it. Yet everyone started cheering and it's like well I don't know. It's just he he never said that the guy was good at singing. It, we just sort of picked up on that. So I think language is a lot more complex than just the words that we use it, it's it's about the way that we say them all we'll start or or i guess it's a mixture of different things that we can't necessarily explain and and this is sort of why i have a, a slight dislike towards uh texting and, and communicating via messenger messenger or social media because there's a big part of the conversation that we're missing it's like sometimes you can pull off sarcasm and sometimes you can pull off I don't know, different sorts of, of witty types of way of using language and it, and it works. But there's a big margin for error, especially when you're talking about things where where um, miscommunication could be detrimental. Like like if you're in a relationship, for example, with somebody um, and they don't respond to your text straight away or, you, or they send you a text and it seems a bit blunt. It's like that person could just be busy, but then you take it in the wrong way because there's this, this big area whereby you can just overthink and sort of fill in the gaps with your own inferences because you, you can't actually see their body language or their facial expression or you can't hear the tone of their voice or the speed of which they're talking or a, or a whole multitude of different factors which, which play into social interactions and communication and, and that's that's missing. All you, all you have is... um. A, a a line you you know, all you have is is words which have been written down and it's not even written really it's typed so it's it's like a virtual representation of what you're trying to say um and i'm not going to completely discredit this because i think you, that you can convert convert a message almost competently using these platforms and I think I think that they have great pragmatic value for example if you're wanting to go out somewhere and you can just arrange to meet up with your friend rather than having to go all the way around to the house find out they're not in go all the way home it's like it's a good way to communicate people with people in a quick and efficient manner which which is conducive to living in modern day society whereby everything is pretty much quick and, and fast moving and, and we haven't got that much time to to I guess as waste doing things that we used to be able to do maybe fifty to a hundred years ago before we had social media and before society became complete became so technologically advanced. Um. So so we do have to use these ways of communicating just for pragmatic value. Um. But I think it's important that we do don't get too caught up in them because, like I've said, there is there is a lot of margin. A large margin of error where where you're obviously losing a part of the communication and I think it's easy to isolate yourself as well because it, it creates this illusion of con of connection like well like with Facebook and with Twitter and with Instagram it's like you can post a picture or or a 
posts or, or anything you want to put on there and it's like it can be it has the capacity to be seen by millions if not billions of people um obviously that that's not the norm you <laughs> like 10 people will probably see your your facebook post if you're just an average person but it's it's, it's not necessarily real it's 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 like a hyper reality or or, or um it, it creates this this false idea that we're connecting with people and that we're we're socializing with people but, but we're not necessarily doing that so i don't i don't know exactly where i'm going with this but i guess i guess you could say that it takes away from what what it means to be human because from for millions of years or however many years humans have been around and, and interacting with each other we've been interacting with each other on a face-to-face -face basis and i know that there has been letters inserted in there for quite a while as well but for the the ma majority of the time we, when we've had to say something to someone or when we've wanted to go out and see people we've had to actually go out and see people we haven't just been able to like click with the click of a button go on in go on, go on the internet and be connected to our our friend circles and, and even even further than that but the fact that we feel like we're connecting with people on the internet and on social media it perhaps it makes us feel disengaged from going out and connecting with people in the real world and actually having real conversations and i guess it, perhaps it could be attributed to um the incline in mental health issues in, in the last 50 years or so because it, it does seem to be the case that things like <laughs> things like tr things like depression and anxiety have have increased dramatically and i think that's a multi-causal thing uh, for example the education system the education systems become a lot more difficult um i think there's been changes in law whereby women are now able to go out to work as well as men so that's caused the dis caused disruption to the traditional values of having a nuclear family whereby that is supposedly the best way of of socializing children um but now that's seen as like patriarchal and i guess it could i guess it it debatably is patriarchal in that women are the ones who have to look after the children and clean up the house and men are the ones who are expected to go out to work and earn money. But that's assuming that the man's role to go out and, and be instrumental and, and earn money for the family is easier or more desirable than the role of, of staying in the house, looking after the children and, and cleaning up and making dinner. That's assuming that those two roles are almost unequal which yes they are unequal but it see i don't know I, f I believe that women should have the right to choose but i don't necessarily know if if this progressiveness is such a great thing because well you can say that it's better that women are now able to choose and go out into the workplace and get a good education and have the opportunity to succeed in life and make a career if they want to do that but i don't think we should necessarily be so quick to assume that it is actually working well, and we can look at a lot of different factors that are perhaps indicating that it's not completely working. Um, for example, the increase in sexual assault charges, um, the Me Too movement, like we don't know where to draw the lines with consent. Like previously, consent was determined by marriage. If you're married, then you can have sex. That's fine. And that's the social norm. It used to be taboo if you had sex outside of marriage, which is essentially what's happening now. And um, I would say that this is a result of of the sexual liberation movement in the 60s and 70s with the incline of, of the hippies and using LSD and different mind-altering substances which sort of dissolve the axiomatic boundaries of society. Um, and now we don't know how to define consent almost and it's, it's almost getting a little bit ridiculous because I've heard of apps that have been created which are like... Um, whereby you have to consent virtually using your phone or using this device wh which which ensures that both pa both both people are, are fully consenting before a sexual act and it's like well is that not going to kill the mood a little bit how far do we really have to go with consent um i think if you say yes it means yes and if you say no it means no but the lines seem to have got so blurred that there's people coming out with anonymous accusations of rape and it's actually turned out that this person this 
typically women, because it is usually women who are doing this, have just had an uncomfortable date. They didn't enjoy the date. The, they didn't say no to the sex, but they didn't particularly want it. So then they've come back feeling all guilty. It's like, oh, I wish that didn't happen. Regretting it and then and then coming out and 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 anonymously accusing a man of rape, but but doing it publicly, so it ruins his whole life. And um, there is actually there's one case that I can remember of this happening specifically, but I can't remember exactly um, what the video was called on YouTube or anything like that. And I know there was another one of um, two years ago, a man got accused of rape by his girlfriend, and and basically after the two years, he he had a good. I think it was a sporting career which was ahead of him. He ended up losing it all, and I think he went to prison for however many years. And then they found out that he was innocent, and it didn't actually happen. And so this is all a result of living in a more progressive society, a society which w wants to have sexual liberation and wants to have women's liberation and wants to have all these things, and just assumes that they're they're good. But I don't I don't think we can assume that they're good because. Well, in what way? In what way are they good? Is it good that women can do the same things as men? Perhaps it is good, but that that's just one way. Is it? It's it's clearly not good in that we don't know how to define consent. It's clearly not good in. I don't know. Is it good in social? Is it good? Is it conducive for being able to socialize children? I'm going back to the nuclear family here. Um, there was a guy called George Murdoch, and he did a study back in the. 1950s I think and it, it was um he studied 250 societies around the world and he found out that the predominant family type within all of those societies was the nuclear family now is it just the case that 250 societies all around the world happen to be patriarchal and happen to be just pushing this one particular family type in order to maintain the male dom dominance and oppress women or is it actually the case that this has some sort of evol evolutionary basis and this happens to be the best type of family which 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 is the greatest for socializing children and and bringing in um and maintaining economic st stability as well and maintaining well Parsons oh no was it Parsons Murdoch four functions Parsons two functions yeah because Parsons said the two functions of the family were primary socialization and the stabilization of adult personalities so and and this whole idea links is fulfilled best within the nuclear family because well primary socialization the man can go out to work he can go out and earn money um, while the woman socializes the children and looks after them so they don't have to go to some nursery where whereby both parents are, are out working so they can't look after the children and they can't participate in the child's early development as much as perhaps is necessary um and then the stabilization of adult personalities is the whole idea that the man goes out to work he brings in some um economic growth into the into the nuclear family then the woman she'll she'll look after him when he gets back so that they could keep this cycle going and they both have a role to play in that and just to assume that the man's role is automatically more liberating than the woman's role because she's in the house. It it's perhaps a little bit presumptuous. Um, and I don't I don't know. I feel so bad saying this because I am myself and I'm, I'm a woman, and um, I like to educate myself. And I think, I think it it definitely should be about choice. But I, I'm I'm even not certain saying that. Like I don't know how far this is really going to go. And I think that especially third wave third wave feminism has definitely gone too far. Um, it's like we want complete equality with men, and uh, but actually I saw something the other day, and it was a bill that was passed, and I think it might have been in the USA, but I can't exactly remember, and um, it was a a bill for compulsory compulsory um, application to the military for for women or something like that, which which is what men have, and you had all these feminists coming out saying no, we don't want this, we don't. We don't want this, and and it's like, well, okay, well, do you really want equality then, or do you just want equality when it benefits you, or when you think it benefits you? Oh, I don't know. I don't think people know what they want. I think people in society have probably become quite self-centered, and uh, I think I think that a lot of us have been indoctrinated into this false idea that it's it's good to 
constantly change society and constantly look for ways to make it better but but the ways that we the ways in which we're being told to make it better aren't necessarily going to improve society at all and there is actually no evidence that those things are going to improve society but we're just being fed it because it is some sort of ideological norm at the minute that it's just it progression is good and i know it's not everyone i, I and i understand that it's mostly people on the radical left side of the political spectrum but yeah so yeah i just don't know i don't know enough about society i don't know enough about politics and i'm okay admitting that and i do have an opinion about things but I, i'm not completely stuck to it i don't i don't feel like i'm ideologically driven in any sort of way I feel like I can look at things sort of objectively, not completely, because I don't think anyone can do that. We all have our own subjective filters, which which cloud cloud our perspective of the world. But I think I think some definitely have that more than others. And I'm I'm not I'm not a moral relativist. I'm not a relativist in in pretty much any sense of the word. I wouldn't say not, not anymore anyway. I used to believe that there's no truth to society. Um, everything is relative. Everything is based on the individual's own interpretation and, and their own reality and that any truth is a good truth and it's like no that's not the case that's something I do stand by and that's something I do believe and the reason I believe that is because there is some what whatever position we're in and whatever position we're in as an individual there's always something that we could perceive that could be better and there's always something that we could perceive that could be worse and if that's the case with ourselves then that's the case with everybody it's like there is a better and there is a worse and there may be disagreement on that and that's probably due to ind individual differences but that doesn't mean that there is no... Oh, I don't know. There is no... I don't think there's any truth which is completely universal. Perhaps. I don't, I don't actually feel comfortable making that statement so I'm, I'm going to retract it but... I'm not sure there's anything that everybody agrees on. Because I think there's some psychopathic individuals. Like I would say that everyone would say that genocide is bad. But if you're in a state which, of which you want to inflict suffering on the world. Then would you argue that genocide is good? Or would you argue that you, or would you say that you know that genocide is bad. But you want things to be bad. Therefore you're still recognising that there is an up. And that there is a down. It's just the thing that you're aiming for is down. Which you suppose. Which. I don't know, maybe that, maybe you think that's going to bring you up. Maybe you think that the world owes you something. Maybe you think that you didn't get far enough in life and that you need to take revenge, take vengeance on the world and perhaps even, I don't know. And I think this is demonstrated in the Cain and Abel story where Cain kills Abel because, well, God didn't like Cain's sacrifice apparently so Cain gets angry at God and then he ends up going out and killing his brother. Um, so yeah I don't know anything about the world anyway I've just talked for like 20 minutes I feel like I had a lot to say I feel like I've got most of it out though but I could keep talking for quite a while actually I don't know if I really want to do that so I started talking about language and how we can say things without actually saying things. So we can infer things. And then I moved on to social media. How a big part of the conversation and a big part of the social interaction is then lost. Um, and then I moved on to changing... Pro to social progressivism. Is that progressivism a word? I don't know. Social progression. Um, and how it's not necessarily a good thing. So we shouldn't assume that. I talked about the Me Too movement, traditional family roles, um, feminism, and yeah, and then truth, and how I think that the, there is an up and there is a down, and I think that that probably is objective to some degree. I think that... We're all able to recognise what's good and what's bad, but some of us want to work towards the bad and some of us want to work towards the good. And and that's probably due, due to socialisation and maybe biological factors and, and a multitude of factors that I, I couldn't even comprehend, but... Yeah. Okay, well...
20 minutes long so I think I'll, I'll end it off there I'm actually glad I started making a video because I don't know I like it when my thoughts flow properly it feels good okay thanks for watching